Our next speaker is Travis Waith Mayer. He is a husband, a father, and a front end developer. He blogs at non traditional.dev. He is a course author at newline.co and the creator and maintainer of Bedrock Layout Primitives, which is a library of composable layout components for React. Please join me in welcoming Travis to the stage. <laughs> What's up, everybody? So I am a firm believer that a good talk starts with jokes. And being a dad, dad jokes are the best jokes. So we're going to start off with a couple. They're all programmer related. But who knows what the, the dev from the south said to the other dev who was not using source, source control. You need to go on and get. <laughs> there you go. Then my last one, OK. I don't deserve that, but thank you. And then the last one, it's back to my dad jokes here. Where do, do devs store their dad jokes? In a database. Yes, that's right. Yes. That's the, OK. I even had a shirt. I was going to wear it, but that would have given my joke away. So I switched to the yo to best dad, which I think I bought this for myself, not my kids. But anyway, like I said, I'm Travis Waithmayer. You can find me at, at Travis Waithmayer, all in camel case on Twitter. And I blog at nontraditional.dev. Work for Anonymy Labs. And uh, here's my, we're hiring, because we are. And, but we're, we're building privacy solutions, both for consumers and businesses. Really exciting. Building stuff like with Electron and browser extensions. So it's really fun. Um, I have a layout library that's fun to maintain called Bedrock Layout Primitives. You can find it there. And I wrote a course recently about writing reusable compo composable layouts. So given that, even though I'm talking about reusable composable layouts, I'm going to talk to you about why you need to stop writing reusable components. <laughs> but we're, we're obviously here, we're living in the age of components. Like, not just React, Re like all the major frameworks have adopted components as their model. And it's changed the way, we, how we build our applications. And there's a lot of reasons why we've adopted this. One is it allows us to break down and isolate our UI into easier to reason about parts, get those working the way we want, then we can compose those up to much larger applications. They're testable. It's a lot easier to test smaller things in isolation. We can be more confident that our UI is going to perform and look the way it's supposed to when we're able to look at them in smaller composable parts. And of course, code reuse. We all love code reuse. We love how we can take something we wrote once and reuse it over and over again. We've got to dry up our code. But sometimes it feels like this is what we all like, love to latch on to, this reusability. We have these reusable components. I write a component, and I could potentially reuse this somewhere else in my app. Even in the React docs, we have, it talks about how components let you split the UI into independent reusable pieces. Whose introduction to React was this thinking in React that was on their blog post? I know it was for me. Or something very similar. Like, even in like the docs, they talk about, hey, let's go find our components before you run a single piece of line of code and go find all these reusable things. So we kind of get fixated and trained on, like, let's reuse these components. Let's make reusable components. Well, I'm going to give you a real life example from my own life. It's my first non trivial React app I wrote. And I've changed the name to protect the innocent or the guilty, whichever one you want to side with here. But like I had to build, the first thing I had to do was build a landing page. And so started off, and I started building a hero component. And apparently, I worked for the Borg. Um, if anyone gets that joke, anyway. And I uh, it started off similar. Like I needed a header, had a class name hero, had a title, an h1 heading, and a paragraph, a subtitle. But this isn't reusable. Like, Where's my dynamic properties? Where's my props here? So of course, 
I quickly adjusted this, went to a V2, added some props, added a title, subtitle. And what I didn't even show you in the last thing was like that hero had a built-in image for the background URL, background URL for the image. And so like what if this potential component wants to have a different image? I need to account for that. So I added that in there. But wait a minute, this isn't very smart because I'm, I'm relying on input from the user of this component and they may not provide the things I want. So I got to start writing some more defensive code here. So now, if they provide a title component, title prop, I can render out that H1. If they provide a subtitle, I can render out that. And if I get the background image URL, then I know I need to change the bat style tag. This is looking great. This is like so reusable now, I'm going to be able to reuse this everywhere. Oh, wait a minute, I need to adjust for like, you know, class names, because they might need to style it slightly differently. And so we got to bring that class name in here and got to put that in that component. And luckily, like, this is all I thought to do. Like, there's so many more ways I could have just dived deep on this thing. But this is where I ended. And then I rinsed and repeated. <laughs> made a tile component, made a tile group, I made a nav bar, a list, a list group. And each one of those all built to be super reusable, customizable. You can use this all over my app. This is so great. I'm excited about this. And then I wired it up, hard-coded two values in, and never touched the thing ever again. <laughs> like, seriously, like, V1 was all I needed. My reusable components never got reused. That hypothetical user I was writing defensive programming for was me, and I never had to write defensive programming for myself, because I just hard-coded values once and never touched it again. In fact, pretty much everything on that landing page was not reusable anywhere else in that app. And to quote Michael Chan, Chantastic, my code was so dry it chafed. <laughs> it really comes back to it's like, why didn't I just do this, the V1? Or even better, I didn't need a component. You could just hard code that in there. Now, at this point, like, there, there's, you can have some valid reasons why, like, maybe it, for, like, code, keeping track of my code and, like, like, like how, how I use it. And I don't want to focus on the hero. I want to focus on other things. It's semantics at this point, because it's really the same thing. But ultimately, I didn't have to write code this part of my app for reuse. That's the point. So one might go, what's the harm? You wrote some defensive programming and you don't, you're not using all that. What, what's the harm in doing this? What, why is that potentially bad? There's a really great talk, and this is, this is great for talks, where they go, watch some other talk. They're smarter than I am. Just watch this one. But really, watch this one. This is really good. Sebastian Mark Bage, I'm probably saying that wrong, used to be on the React Core team, has this great talk called Minimal API Surface Area. It's about why they made some of the decisions, especially early on with React. But I want to really just kind of focus in on a couple things that he brought up in this talk. One of those, you kind of saw it already, no abstraction is better than the wrong abstraction. He goes on to say, having no abstraction is easier to recover from when you realize you've, you're going in the wrong direction than if you have an abstraction and then you find out you're going in the wrong direction. The other one is abstractions often lead to more abstractions. Our abstractions are kind of like rabbits. They just start multiplying. And as soon as you create one abstraction or one code reuse, when you try to reuse it somewhere else, you have to tweak it and you make another abstraction in the middle somewhere just to make it so that general purpose abstraction still works across the board. And, it, and they tend to grow like rabbits. And I don't know about you, but like the more code you have, the more bugs you have, no matter what. As soon as you write code, it's buggy. So why do we do this? Why is it something that we kind of lend do as developers? Why, why do we like, kind of lend ourselves towards trying to create these reusable components, these reusable abstractions? This is not an exhaustive list. You could probably create more things than this. But these are things that I have kind of latch on to. One is we kind of get this recency bias. Hey, it solved our problem in our last app. Let's just bring it in, because it's probably going to solve our problem here with you know, maybe a little tweak. 
and it's, it's seeing something that's similar and assuming it's the same problem that where we fall into some of those problems. Another one is making abstractions. It's fun. Let's be honest. I wrote this component. You can go find it on NPM right now. Download it. It's called React Clean Form. Um, the whole purpose was to abstract away that boilerplate that you do in React where you, like, you have state and you have to wire up change val handlers on each of your inputs and then hook up that value. And there's that just annoying boilerplate that you always have to do when you're making controlled components. And I'm like, let's, let's make this component that will recursively find all my in compo in input components and inject those things for them. So all you have to do is just give it an initial state and, and, and just put the proper name on the input fields, and there you go. It works great. It's super fun. I'm really proud of it still, like how fun it was. And it's useless. Because it provides no value over than just using uncontrolled components. And if you need to actually wire up to keep track of the state because you need to do validation, that form component that I wrote didn't do, give you access to that state. So you would have, like, if you adopted it, you would have been tearing it right back out again. So the point is, like, that abstraction was the wrong abstraction. <laughs> but it was super fun. And that's where we can get trick ourselves into, like, because this is super fun and it's really fun and clever that we get going down the wrong path just because it's fun. Abstraction can also be a form of procrastination. Let's just be honest. It's really easy to fool ourselves into thinking we're being productive, that we're working really hard, because we're making this generalized thing that we can reuse in our app. But all we're really doing is just delaying the, solving our real problems that we have right now. I'm not saying that's what's always happening. That's not saying that's what you're always doing. But Let's just be honest, like, it's Friday, you finish the ticket, you don't want to pick up that next thing on, like, midway through Friday just to, like, then stop working on it. It's a lot funner to go, I'm still working on this ticket because I got to abstract it away. I got to make this fun abstraction anyway. Another one is self-confidence. Um, Dan Abramoff said, we tend to attach ourselves self-worth to something that can be measured a set of strict lint rules, a naming scheme, a file structure, a lack of duplication. It can be easy to compensate our own self-worth based on the code that we're writing. And we can feel less clever if all we're doing is just wiring up an H1 and paragraph and hard coding some values. That doesn't feel smart. That's something you learn. Like, beginner, like, 101 dev. And if you attach your self-worth to the code that you're writing, you, it can force you to want to, like, be more clever with your code to show just how smart you are. I don't want to focus on the negative side. I just really want to go into those just so we're aware of them. But I really want to focus on these last parts. So how do we stop ourselves from writing over-abstracting our code, over-engineering our, co our code bases? One is to always go into all the code we write with the mindset of how do we solve our real problems that we have now and not the hypothetical ones of the future. And that doesn't mean that like, being aware of hypothetical problems of the future is a bad thing, that we should be dumb and have blinders on. That's a good thing. That's great code craftsmanship. But to always be trying to solve those hypothetical problems instead of just solving the real problems and going on, we, we might fall into that, that problem of writing abstractions that we don't need to write right now. Now, when we hit those problems, then solve those problems then. Only generalize if you're actually fixing a bug. You might have duplicate code in there, but our app works just great. So if you don't have a bug that you're trying to solve with this, don't abstract it. Don't try to solve, generalize something until you know it's actually solving a real problem. Another one is make your abstractions worth it. 
I, in other words, like, if you can't reuse this in more than just uh, one or two places, it's probably not the right time to start solving this with general reusability yet. I mean, there's this concept of the rule of three. Has everyone heard of the rule of three, anybody? Like, I don't know if it has to be a hard-coded number of three, but the idea is basically, like, until you see it at least three times, do you really know that you have a general problem that needs to be solved? And I think this is probably, I end with this one, I think this is the most important one. We need to be okay as people who have our code being checked in, as well as people, when we're doing code reviews, being okay saying, I think we've overgeneralized this, I think we need to step back. And being okay with that. Being okay say, hey, I think we, we don't know if this is actually our problem that we need to solve yet. I think we should go unabstract that and wind out that abstraction. And as you, the one who had fun creating that fun generalized abstraction, being okay recognizing, yeah, maybe this wasn't the right time, and not attributing your self-worth to that. Thank you very much. I mean, I was really excited to talk about today. Uh, you can find me at Travis Waithmare on Twitter. I'm going to tweet out these slides. Hit me up. I love talking about this kind of stuff. So um, that's it. Thank you.